Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our commentary of Source Code from 2011, directed by then up and comer director Duncan Jones and starring Jake Gyllenhaal. He mm. also wrote it, right? I'm sorry? Duncan also wrote it, actually, right? Actually, no, Duncan Jones didn't write this movie, he only directed. Huh. The actual writer was a guy by the name of um, Ben Ripley. What did he ben do? Ben Ripley. What did he do? Ben Ripley, Ripley, whoever. He wrote his previous films included Species Free, Species The Awakening, The Watch, this movie, and then Boy Choir and the upcoming Flatliners. I have no idea what never any heard of these movies. Yeah, I've never heard of the of these movies. I've never even seen. This, I guess his. Movies. I guess his. My guess is his spiel is low budget movies that he writes. Either that, or they're just movies that fall under the radar for whatever reason. Yeah. Okay, audience, we are going to start before the Summit Entertainment logo, I believe. So, uh, got your copies ready? Good. Yes. yes. Okay. Three, two, one, click. It's always been, you know, it's been a while since we've actually, no, it wasn't too long since we did Timeline, but I was going to say it's been a while since we've done one of these lost in time sort of films that pretty much fell under the radar. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Shiny film logos. Don't you love them? Oh no. It's oh never mind. Different one. <laughs> I bet you ever was on Lionsgate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're Well, actually Summit Entertainment is owned by Lionsgate. There you go. I'm so, Mark Gordon. So technically this is a Lionsgate movie. Sort of. So we start off with a scene that reminds me of the opening of Ballistic X vs. Sever. Wow, I actually remember something from Ballistic X vs. Sever. I can't believe you actually Amazing. remember something from that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay. Jova, you do, do you like do you like trains? Sure. Well, good, because the, most of the movie is going to take place in a train. So what is this? Futuristic New York? Futuristic Las Vegas? Futuristic Detroit? Mm, not exactly, no. no. In fact, I don't think they even say what the year is. Basically, Joma, this is kind of like the speed of trains. Cool. So, uh, do we ever know what city this is in? Also, uh, uh, Duncan, um, I don't get me wrong, I'm sure this town is, on, I'm sure this town is nice, it's but... It's Chicago. Yeah, I'm sure Chicago. Chicago I'm, I'm sure Chicago is nice, ah, okay. Duncan. But uh, the top, the 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 top view. Okay, <laughs> I don't really need a, a tourist video of Chicago. Come on, let's move this along. <laughs> well, it depends on how well you use. Enough of those. Our... We have enough of those. The Nolan Batman movies. Remember, guys, whenever you're using a metropolitan city, especially one of the famous ones, it's almost obligatory that you use a bird's. Well, I guess game. to be, I guess to be fair, it's still better than in The Hobbit, where we have to see the characters walking on top of a mountain for like thirty times. You know, because people love mm -hmm. it so much in the first movie, so let's repeat it like thirty times in The Hobbit. Ugh. And there he is, the star I mean, of the movie, Jake Gyllenhaal, playing a character named, I'm reading off uh, Wikipedia here, Captain Coulter Stevens, a US Army pilot who is now trying to have a bit more of a normal life. Keyword being trying. Let me guess, P PTSD. Uh huh. And he has a wife and kids. Ah. God. <laughs> I, I dreamt that I was in love with uh, with uh, I, I dreamt that I was in love with uh, Eve Ledger. Duh. Okay, let me guess: PTSD, wife and kids, family gets held hostage, forced back into action. I'm too old for this. Yeah. Whoa. That's one movie uh, I have to pick uh, at some point. There's one movie I have to pick at some point. Broke Rock Mountain. All right. Um, speaking of the speaking of Gyllenhaal, um, out of the Okay, well, as we know, there's two famous Jillian Halls, Jake and his sister Maggie. Who do you think's the better actor of the two? I like uh, both. I like both. I, I'm guessing they're both good. I, my guess it depends on what film they're in. I mean, I didn't. I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal was fine in Prince of Persia. Was fine as can be in that movie. So, are they co-starring in some or something? No, 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 uh, no, not that. No, not in this one. I think the only one they did together was Donnie Darko. Oh god, um, and now I wonder if there's ever been a brother-sister set of actors who've had to play a married couple in a movie. 
Uh, so uh, honestly, honestly, uh, Jova. Usually, when when in that in those cases, the directors usually prefer to actually get two two actors that are actually married to each other, like Kubrick did with Eyes Wide Shut. Not so much. Oh, I, wait, weren't they just boyfriend and girlfriend at the time? No, 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 no. At the time of Eyes Wide Shut, uh, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman were married. Good thing too, because if they had been in any other relationship, I think they're. Other would be kind of uh, uncomfortable. I'm pretty sure that was the main reason why um, Kubrick cast them. Mm. Okay, so um, aside from PTSD, it seems to be a pretty normal day. Mm. Okay. So, question. What is the Terminator geek from American Pie doing in this movie? <laughs> All aboard. Wait, you do double decker trains? I'm, think, yeah, yeah, I'm, think, I'm thinking of what movie to do tomorrow. What, are you surprised? I'm thinking, of what yeah. I'm thinking of what movie for me to pick tomorrow, but I'm not going to pick American Pie because uh, I think that that requires a, a bigger sausage fest than all four of us. Doesn't actually Shiro also has seen those movies too. Oh yeah, right. Mm. I'll have to ask her if she wants to be in those. I remember how you and her once tag team on school days comparing it to American Pie. Yeah, except American Pie as characters that I actually like. Exactly. And by that I mean the and by that audience I mean the four movies that were actually made uh with the main cast, not the shitty spin off movies. And yes, Dwibs, we do have bi-level rail cars over here. Huh. Don't you guys as well? No, we don't. Huh, oh, really? No. Wikipedia says you do. I'm seeing things. If they are, they're rare. So basically, Jake is a bit of a... Pa a bit paranoid in this, in this, in this role. Like and I also, say, he has... PSD. He kind of looks different from his image and his ID card. Uh, no, Jake, don't! This is a bad idea! Don't worry, this will be explained later. Are they gonna pull a total recall? No, no, fortunately not. I mean, I, I think even Terry will admit that this game, that, it's, that this movie is way better than Total, Re than the total Recall movie. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, I thought you liked Total Recall. No, no, uh, I, I, do, no wait, I, I like the original movie, not the new one. Oh, I was talking about the original movie. Well, I mean, you know, similar... Uh, oh. Uh, okay, Michelle Monaghan, those are three words you never say. It's gonna be okay. Okay, four words, actually, but you know what? It's still the same thing. <laughs> and now look what's happened. Uh, are you sure they're not pulling a Total Recall? Oh, just hold or on. Or was that all just, just a flashback? Just hold on, Joe. All right. Keep an eye on him today. Hmm? We. Oh, this movie came out in 2011. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's why you thought I was talking about the newer Total Recall. Yeah, did, did 2011 really have that many memorable movies? Aside from Harry Potter 7, 8, Part 2. There are a few I just can't name off the top of my head. Weird, this movie looks older than the 2011 film in some ways. Because it was made in 2010, technically, Jova. Ah, one of those delayed releases. Actually, they always film a movie, almost always film a movie a year before it comes out. 
Uh, well, what I mean is, like, well, it feels like, you know, older than, like, you know, the 2010 sort of thing. Like, this feels, like, a bit 2005-ish by the looks. <laughs> All right. Uh-oh. I've played enough Portal to know where this is gonna go. <laughs> Is this your card, Mr. Gyllenhaal? Uh, Mission Impossible now. Dun, 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 dun. Had a recall. Oh, hi, Felix Leiter. <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking. That's Felix Leiter, played by... Okay, there's, okay. Felix Leiter isn't the character's name here. He's played by Jeffrey Wright, who was Felix Leiter in Casino Royale 2006 and Quantum of Solace. Nice, I guess. Yep. Whoa. Well, snap. And back we go. Okay. Welcome, guys, to our commentary of source code. Wait okay. a minute. I'm getting a sense of deja vu. That's the idea. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay, so this, this movie stars Jake Gyllenhaal as the main character. I get the feeling we've said this already, Dwips. <laughs> Gee, uh, wait, what? So basically, we're also going to have kind of a Groundhog Day kind of thing going on. Ah. Yep. So, basically, from what I can gather, the source code is like this virtual reality where you can literally replay a scenario over and over so you can investigate something. You know, you know if... If 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 it, if I could have got if I could have got it to work logistically, I could have just had us repeat our that last bit of commentary we did the first time the scene was played over and over again. <laughs> okay, so Jake is just as much in the dark of about this situation as we are. Hmm. Which makes him a good. Which already makes this uh, a much better you. Uh, example of how to make a protagonist in a certain trilogy that I could mention. Yeah. And also, um, this is how a good detective story works. The audience should be just as, um, should be just about, about as grasping at the situation as our protagonist. Yeah. If we're ahead or if the protagonist is ahead, that can be a bit of an issue. It can work sometimes, but the main idea is to like have it so that the solution you can possibly solve or you could be stumped on but not to make the solution downright impossible to figure out. <laughs> Either that or just have the audience move exactly with the protagonist in that, which I guess this one's going for. Hmm, I see. So it's like a combination of, uh, uh, yeah, combination of Groundhog Day, um, oh yeah, um, what's that movie called? Um, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Well, if you got, well, that's... Actually, this, 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 actually no, this, this came out a few years before Edge of Tomorrow. Well, oh, now I remember, the movie Deja Vu. Oh. 
Also, I think it throws in a bit of murder on the Orient Express because, you know, murder on the train and all things probably going to take place on a train. But this time, instead of just one person, it's everyone on the train. Okay, yeah. okay, Pedro, I've forgotten. Is there a scenario in this movie where he fails to get on the train? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I'm guessing would... the difference is like, well, see, unlike Groundhog Day, he can't really try to change the future because, well, this isn't really so much time travel. Well, it is technically time traveling, but it's more like in a data world. Yeah, I suppose. Although I do have to wonder why the authorities want him in particular to do it. Although I'm guessing that'll get explained later. <laughs> okay. Now, where did I go last time? Here. All right. Let's see if we can have, find some more light on the situation than earlier. Mm-hmm. Or else, um, or else everyone's going to get blown up. Needless to say, yeah. That yeah. would really suck. Mm-hmm. Okay. But how did he get that open? There you go. That'll Use his do. army strength to pull it down. Whoa. Well, Jesus. well, well. Yeah, this could be a bit tricky. Well, he can just reset, can he? Yeah, but um, I think it, I think it'd be best if you sorted out this situation now. Hmm. Uh, cut the red wire. Uh, oh wait. Good question, actually. No, you fool! Poor guy, he's so confused. It's like, should I even bother with the bomb? It's a digital world. Should I try and save the people? Should I just try and find the culprit? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Dun dun dun. Ha! <laughs> Wait a minute. I wonder if he's been in the digital world this whole time, actually, now that I think about it. And he's just forgotten up to that point where he apparently got the idea of Sean. Ooh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there he wasn't lying. Well, actually, he may have been. There'll be a next time for him. Not so much for you. Okay. Well, um, that went well. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, let's try this again then. <laughs> Just try to lower your pulse after you got blown apart as far as your mind is concerned. Oh, wait. No, wait. Uh, we, have to, we have to start again. Uh, the, the mic wasn't blown again. Okay. Uh, no try. <laughs> I hate hey, humanity. Yeah. <laughs> We must suck for the guy trying to get back home from Afghanistan and then, oh, sorry, we need you to help out with this uh, super lethal and dangerous digital adventure. Hmm. Uh, hang on. Wow. Oh, 
I mean, how bad could the truth be in this case? Just depends on if his whole life is a lie, arranging to just your big mm. dicks. Yeah, hey, boy. Well, crap. Oh, boy. How does that work? Oh, okay, we got no time to explain. <laughs> Fair enough. So, as far as he knows, every character on that train is dead. Alright. Well, you're one step nearer. They were all the bomber. Hmm. Wow, well, then that really would be a. Mm. Well, for anyone who hasn't read the book, I probably shouldn't say. You'll get used to it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like you can feel pain in that universe. Oh, wait, no, you actually feel like you're the actual guy in there. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our commentary of source code. Uh, yeah! Pedro, uh, I'm getting a sense of deja vu. Ah, uh, probably nothing. Mm. So, uh, I'll, be right, I'll be right back, see if I can escape this time loop. Eh, what time loop? Just gonna see if we can somehow break the the fabric of space and time to end this this stupid loop. What's he talking about? This is our first time watching this. <laughs> hey, Pedro. best pickup line ever. You're very hey, decent. <laughs> Pedro. What? You're very, very decent. I'm not, like, could you imagine? You're, uh, uh, yeah, you're, you're not that pretty, but you're decent at least. That's totally. Well, then again, she's a dead gal, so. Eh, beggars can't be choosers. I'm guessing later they explain how they linked his persona up to the Sean guy. Do they? You'll see. Okay. Ooh, a game. I love games. Is there? Hmm. Why, thank you, Miss Computer Program. You've actually been a pretty good help in developing a theory. This is like a speed movie where you get to meet each of the characters one by one. Ha! Racial profiling. 
<laughs> ah, movie, you were quite ahead of your time. Well, actually, no, you weren't. It only became more notable. Oh, but... Oh no, Christine! Now that means an evil car is actually the mastermind! <laughs> Don't you see? There's a spark between us! But don't you know, it's a nice train, as school days would say. <laughs> no, seriously, there's several bad endings involving trains in school days, the games. Okay, um, have we, um, ha uh, did we repeat again? No, 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 we're at the point where they're trying to get off the train. Well, okay. You'll thank me later, lady. Mm-hmm. Trains, 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 more trains. Trains the movie. Mr. Bean, is that you? Okay, this bit, this bit kind of gives a bit, gives off a bit of an unfortunate implication here. You mean the racial profiling? They already made the gag. Yeah, yeah, they're only targeting that guy because he's a Muslim. Yeah. Oh boy. Shh, let's not open that can of worms. I already Please. made the reference. Besides, Please. I'm guessing that this movie's actually being aware of it, and you know the fact that you know. Well, yeah, it is racial profiling. That's a process of elimination. And hey, at least this movie doesn't seem to be just trying to be racist for the sake of being racist. Unlike a certain presidential candidate I could mention. Just one more second, lady, who I kissed and convinced to miss her whole train trip. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at Jake looking all smug. <laughs> well, crap. Whoop. <sighs> Admittedly, you did kind of come up as suspicious when you lied about having a phone. Yeah. Um, he's a Muslim, therefore I'm, I think he's a suicide bomber. Uh, uh. uh wait, oh, crap. How do you know it wasn't him? I mean, for all you know, he could have activated. <laughs> oh, never mind. I guess he thinks it is him now. Yep. Ooh. Oh, that's going to hurt. Yep. Oh, dear. Shaw. Actually, what does he care? He'll just reset. Yep. Whip. And back we go. Okay, so that's one suspect ruled out. Well, 
I wouldn't say he's completely ruled out. I mean, for all he knows, he could have just activated it as a timer. Okay, this is new. Oh, crud. I think you got a breach. How? I'm afraid I cannot let you do that, Dave. What the hell? You see, Jake, I'm taking care of this mission. Why, though? I'm afraid this conversation will not be of any further help to us. Yes, because Paramount well, um, is about to sue. Meanwhile, Jake is completely in the dark. Shall we, and we sing oh. a little song? Day ah, get day. it? It's, 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 um, it's, um, it's, it's, um, what's the word? Alone in the dark? No, 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 no. It's symbolism for how he's in the dark in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> if that was Duncan's intention, then uh, I think you're a bit on the nose there, mate. I wonder, what if the bomber is someone in the organization eh, that's trying to do honestly, it for Honestly, uh, I've seen way worse in that regard. Uh, trust me, uh, in AI, the symbolism is not even on your nose. It's in your fucking nostrils. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You can't leave. <laughs> All right, that didn't work. Oh god. So what are they talking about? Are they talking about the mission or are they talking about something else? We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. That should be the smoothest catchphrase. Wait and see. And again, mystery, so I can Well the actual it. tagline is make every second count. Huh. And they certainly do that. Yep. What? What? What's I couldn't that? hear you. Warcraft. Do, do oh my god. Warcraft. Duncan Jones was secretly advertising Warcraft in this movie. The, the real kicker is that she was actually saying don't do Warcraft, but it got warped into saying do Warcraft. <laughs> Uh, Jeffrey, uh, um, I might want to get the situation sorted. <laughs> Who is this Captain Stevens you mentioned? He's Captain Stevens of the USS Sunburst. Or Captain Stevens of the SS Universe. Hooray! You saved an AI! Well, actually, not even an AI. You saved no, a bunch didn't. of polygons. Huh? It's a video game, I'm guessing. Alright, let's hear it then. Alright. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? I think so, Joe, but I don't... 
but my arm doesn't stretch that hard. Oh, you bumbling buffoon. Okay. So, it was literally destiny that he got hit by that trade. Pretty much. Sorry, buddy. It's David Cage world. Your choices <laughs> don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, beyond two souls, anyway. And Indigo Prophecy. Mm. Wait, Indigo Prophecy had cho Oh, yeah, it did have choices! <laughs> oh, I completely forgot about that at Indigo Prophecy. Granted, that one was more of an action there game. Is. Wait, just this morning? Oh. So, this train blew up in the morning, and they managed to get this guy. Look at his split so that it's the same day. <laughs> Lucky for them. I'll say. Oh, oh God. God. Not again with Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guys. Where is there with films obsessing of blowing up Chicago? Well, Chicago had those massive fires, which didn't help as well. See, the thing is, Dwebs, um, it's because uh, Chicago looks really nice on film, and it's much easier to shoot than in New York because it's nowhere near as big. Mm-hmm. Really? New York City right. is pretty huge, actually. In fact, That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oh, right, right, right. Chicago is nowhere near as big as New York. That's what I'm saying. Welcome to our commentary on source code. Welcome yeah. back. Welcome back. Welcome back to Dwebs trying to still trying to reuse this joke. <laughs> what joke? Seriously, Peter, what joke were you talking about? <laughs> so, uh... Save that, save that for, um... For Edge of Tomorrow. So, uh, yeah... Thinking about um, using the joke in that one, too. <laughs> Anywho, um, when it comes to Chicago, there's also a thing. Chicago's one of the cities that you love to see looking pretty, but also look wrecked and, uh down and in the dark and stuff. It's literally the city of two coins. You can either have it look as marvelous as possible or have it be a dystopian future place. Mm -hmm. Though not quite as much dystopian future as Detroit. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, the doobie. Sort of. Okay, so we know it wasn't the uh, Muslim guy and we know where it was buried. It's so obvious who it is, guys. It's the waitress who is yet to show up on screen. <laughs> yeah, it's the PA announcer, of course. Yeah. <laughs> she sounds enough like GLaDOS, so she must be evil. Uh, speaking of sci-fi actors, um, um, basically, well, uh, uh, Scott Bakula, who was most famous for being in Star Trek Enterprise, and, um, oh fuck, I forgot the name of that was show he was in. Um, Wasn't he in that uh, show oh, that oh, almost quantum, everyone quantum in Star Trek gets banished to? No, 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 no Quantum Leap. Ah, uh, Scott yeah, Bakula is in this one as well. There's only a cameo, though, not till later on. And if you really only know it was him if you'd watched Star Trek Enterprise or Quantum Leap. Or other stuff he was in. Whoop. <laughs> Oh. 
Oh. Oh. Never mind. I guess that's not an automatic game over. Uh-oh. You'll see why. It's a long story, honey. I'd hunker down with the soonest and piece of meat soon. Hmm. Well, hey, if, uh... Yeah. Well, hey, if that chick from Speed 1 can get laid right after a catastrophe, why can't I get laid right before it? It is the other guy uh, most of his speed when he answered that question. <laughs> also, uh, 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 oh. I think I may have just found the most Michael Bayish movie without Michael Bay in just that one shot. Mm, nah, not enough racism. Not enough. <laughs> we need more racism in order for, to truly, be, in order for it to truly become that. Let's talk about that one scene, though. I mean, the way that explosion was done so artistically, that is just something I would swear Michael Bay did. Not to mention, Job, if this was a Michael Bay movie, it would take place in the planet Magic Hour. Magic Hour? You know, because every fucking scene, in, 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 he loves to make shoot all, most of those scenes, uh, especially when people come out of the cars and the fucking... Uh, uh, when it's sundown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, excuse him for being new to a system that he's only literally just learned about in a day. Well, we're halfway through, so yeah. Hmm. What? Well, uh, it's a shame if this wasn't spot. in LA. Then they could have enlisted the help of Miles Edgeworth for this. Uh oh, my head. What happened? Um, you're playing a really bad video game. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's the newest in VR technology, brought to you by Apple. Wait a minute. Yeah. If we've only just started our commentary of the movie, how come it says 4202, 3, 4? That's what we call a contradiction, Dwibs, and I think I'm a bit omniscient about this, so I'll just let you go about it hunky-dory. <sighs> you see, Dwibs, I'm a god, because I now know that this train is going to blow up in eight minutes. That girl, she quit her job and everything. That woman, she wants to be a singer in Dallas. That guy, he's planning to cheat on that girl. And what? She I'm wants... not even married. And she, <laughs> she's planning to call it off. But what about the guy with the staff with the Darth Vader hat? Oh, that's just James Earl Jones. <laughs> Wait, Why? What's Jones doing near Chicago? It's simple. He's on an... a vacation. <sighs> My professor, I think you're hitting on me with that lingo. Wow. Okay. Alright, so, um... Direct pursuit didn't work. Um, calling out people didn't work. Uh... So, yeah, this movie's shaping up to be great and all, but it, it, I think it's going to be one of those movies where I have to point out one thing. Uh, what about an actual, you know, conservative, usual investigation into the matter? You know, like, out in the real world? I mean, it's like, this was like their first go-to option. It's like, I'm pretty sure bombing experiences like this happen quite a bit.
<laughs> uh, oh, keep it together, Jeff. Keep it together. <laughs> I wonder if this is how the video game characters in the David Cage games feel. Hmm. Imagine having to replay a certain segment. Well, and by replay, I mean an indigo prophecy or heavy rain because Beyond Two Souls has little to no game overs. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. She's. <laughs> Assault civilians? Lady, he's just asking you a few questions. Jeez. Assault civilians. <laughs> Don't drop it, Jake. You know, it'd be funny as if he accidentally activates the bomb. <laughs> yeah, plot twist. The evil mastermind was that old lady. Oh, hi, Bing. Nobody uses you. <laughs> Except this movie. Well, actually, the amazing Spider-Man. Well, actually, the job I do, but only for one thing. Um, uh, I'll be quick. Uh, here's, a, here's a little curiosity for, for, for people. Bing is actually mm -hmm. the best search engine if you're searching for porn. Why? Because, wow. because uh, one like other search engines, Bing, when you're going for a video, searching for video pages, any video page has a little preview thing before you even go to the actual page itself. So that's really good if you're searching for, uh, if you want to, uh, if you don't want, if you want to, you know, see a preview of, of a video before you watch it, or even go to the videos page. That's actually a good point. And stuff like ask.com also, for some reason, is able to look into things better sometimes. Ha! <sighs> So Bing, so the best thing for Bing is looking up porn. Yes. Or I guess videos. Well, that's in something, I guess. <laughs> well, would you say it's videos in general or really just porn? Well, usually it's only. More, well, I usually only use that functionality for porn, but I guess some people might find other other uses for it. Ooh. Eh? Uh? Wow. Gotta love how those people left in that little hitch where the guy could figure out the truth that way. Hmm. Um, sir, maybe we should block out that part about the guy dying. Yep. Yep. Oh dear. Jake's having computer vision. <laughs> Well, oh, look at the cards. Whoop. So that's how he ended up there. Although you think he'd be dead. Well, yeah, he just asked that question. Look, uh, dicks. Whenever the guy figures out a big thing, best idea is not to try and change the subject at this point. Uh... Okay! What the heck is up with... Never mind, I'm sure there's a reason for that camera. Well, it's so he can see her, but there. <laughs> you... you... <laughs> <laughs> Sir, 
So this is screwed up. It's a dream within a dream, sorta. Mm, <laughs> well, not really, since there's no actual dreaming here. <laughs> Why, man? Like, what well, was he like in another data world doing all Whoa. this? What the? Uh, it's expanding. God damn it, Duncan. Just when we think things couldn't get any worse. <laughs> also, this woman kind of looks like a, um, a, a discount Julia Roberts. <laughs> well, that was warranted. I mean, seriously, the guy just figures out he's dead, and that's all you can say? It's classified? Yeah. Fuck you! So, wait, is he like a program or something that's keeping him alive? You'll find out at the end. Oh, they haven't explained that, okay. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> he doesn't take any crap. Mm. Yeah, we gave it to Argy and they rated it 7 out of 10. Too much insolence. <laughs> uh oh we're gonna have to ramp up the dick on this one guys yeah Said everyone who watched Fateful Findings. <laughs> so Shinteo isn't going to be, a, is still not around. Otherwise, ah! I, otherwise, I would just uh. pick Double Down, the the other another one of um, Neil Breen's movies. What, what the? <laughs> Whoa! Well, that happened. He was in the middle of the explosion. Boy, wouldn't it suck if it turns out that the killer isn't even on the train and this has all been a waste of their time? Wow. Whoa. The. The. Oh. You know, if you drive him insane, there goes the program. Hi, Scott Bakula. Hmm. Hmm. 
<laughs> uh oh. They left on bad terms. It's just in. My life sucks. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our commentary of source code. Uh, wait. That's it. I'm shooting a hole in this. <laughs> ah, Jonathan, no! I'm sorry, Dwibs. It has to be done. No, the just fool. Stand still. No. Like this won't hurt. Jonathan, wait. No. <laughs> I think it worked. Okay. Okay, I just had to um, put a little patch over that, and now we're back on commentary. What? Oh, right. Of course we are. <laughs> Don't fire that gun, Jova. Yeah. It did its job. But, Jova, you fool. By killing Pedro, you unraveled the very fabric of space and time. Don't worry. It'll eventually lead to another reset. I learned it from a few games. Okay. That's okay, though. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Thanks to the limey wimey stupid uh, time loop logic from Final Fantasy VIII, I'm here again. Mm hmm. That How awesome. You... <laughs> okay, you know what? Forget it. You're here. That's what's important. Moving on. <laughs> Let's just move on before we cause more plot holes in our own storyline. That's not even having to do with anything in the actual movie. <laughs> huh. I guess that's this movie's catchphrase. Give me your phone. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's gone bonkers. I mean, literally, his reward is just being able to die. I mean, at least, uh, at least with Bill Murray, he only got insane because he was stuck in the loop. This guy, it's pretty much his only option. But whose turn was it? It was... Uh, him. Hmm. Hmm. Or was it the redhead, maybe, who did it? <laughs> All right, let's uh, do a gentle pursuing. There he is. Surprise doesn't have any form. Oh, yeah, he's got a different ID. So, uh, yeah. Derek Frost. Oh. Took too long, mate. But hey, at least you gained some valuable information. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. That has got to be one of the most inconvenient emergency door opens I've seen before. Oh. ow, 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 ow. Okay, maybe next time I should get off the train before it starts moving. Yeah. That might be for the best, yes. Yeah. Guess he really wants to get this over with as, as soon as possible. <laughs> I'm next ah. never taking a train uh, ever again. I'll take a plane next time. Oh, I'm sorry. What was that you said? Reset. Well, <laughs> the... <laughs> Remember that license plate, it could be a clue. <laughs> you know, you're only making yourself look like a criminal here. Exactly, oh. don't you see he's not oh, a criminal? Oh, oh, oh. oh. But 
how can anyone find a body on there then? You know, guy, you're acting very shifty. I get the feeling he knows that. Mm -hmm. Okay, inside the box is... Oh, okay, Jake's going to open it. Okay, inside the box is... Whoa! Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, goody. Oh. oh, dear. And now she's dead. Well, well dying. But at least you found the bomber. Yeah. Okay. Gently. <laughs> I killed your girlfriend. Hold on. Oh. So you're trying to set off the rapture by uh, blowing stuff up. Yeah. Hold on. <clears throat> ah, okay. Okay, so now we know the identity of the bomber. Simple. Just reset. This guy. Okay, well, that didn't go so well. Other than, other than those revelations. Well, hey, now we know the guy's face, so I guess you can tell them who it is. Mm. I'm surprised that wasn't the movie's tagline everything is going to be okay I guess everything will be okay except for anyone on that trade or anyone living in Chicago well, I mean, they're trying to stop the bomber from attacking Chicago. Alright. But oh boy. I think, Jake, I think you forgot something. Well, he knew about the bomb. If anything, I guess his main objective was just figuring out who the bomber was. Well, there you go. He's still alive. Oh, he's gonna get run over by a car, isn't he? Nope. Uh, guess they ran out of creative minutes. ways to kill him in eight minutes. Yeah? What is it? Okay. There we go.
Ah? Eh? Oh. Interesting. Okay. Well, they have the location of the van and the driver, so let's get him. All right. There's got to be a cat. There always is. So, yeah. So, apparently this guy, he, well, apparently he's comatose in the real world and is missing his limbs. Yeah. Oh, you surrendered. Have you disabled the bomb? Maybe. Well, there's got to be more. We're only two thirds of the way in. I guess either most of it will be dedicated to the guy trying to save people in the game, or... Yes, it's called uh, uh, Bizarro Her, whatever her name is. Um, her character's name, let me check, let me check. Uh, she's played by Vera Firming Firminga. Uh, Colleen Goodwin. Uh, Bizarro Kareen. Uh, Colleen. C-O-L-L-E-M. All right. <laughs> She did what now? and say quantum leap <laughs> he's really determined isn't he so he has a theory that this is all an alternative timeline I guess or maybe this is the alternative timeline and it's really uh oh 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 wait wait She's getting his answers in text. So maybe this is the dream world. Awesome. Although that kind of makes me wonder if he's been dying in the real world or if this has all just been one long, long dream. Just eight minutes, Goodwin. <laughs> so these people are fake. Or is it him that's fake? Or is he a computer program? Or we'll, we'll find out. We got we got half an hour of movie left. <laughs> on, uh, under half an hour. I'll give this movie credit. It's doing a good job of keeping me on the edge of my seat. I'm actually on a seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, Captain, you are literally hanging on the edge of tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, ooh. What?
got speed. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to our commentary on source code. Uh, excuse me, audience. Oh, shoot. <laughs> shoot, hold on. <laughs> Give me a second. Jova, you fool. The person you're trying to shoot has gotten away now. No, I'm not shooting a person. I'm... <sighs> I'm going to shoot a hole in the third wall. Eventually. So stop jamming. <laughs> Behold, Jova, our greatest hero. He can't cock a gun properly. No, it's just the ammunition got jammed. <laughs> Just Jova, just just give up. Besides, wait till the next loop or something. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> sure you did. There we go. Mm. Ah, what the heck? I'll actually wait and see how this plays out. Alright. Okay. Now be careful, mates. Remember, there's no going back. So if he can win this, it'll somehow create an alternate timeline where everything's hunky dory. So this is reverse Star Trek 2009. Keen. It's a beautiful day, and I can't stop. <laughs> he just took his handcuffs. Be careful, guy, if this is the real... <laughs> yes, we can... So basically, what are you gonna do? Like, wipe everyone's memory after each mission? Oh god. Mm-hmm. Oh! You wipe. Wow, Toby, you were right. Well, shoot! That's... About that. Uh. Okay. Okay. So yeah, um, Jeffrey Wright in this movie is a dick, without a doubt. Who did the music for this movie? Uh, an, an, an unknown, actually. Chris Bacon. Chris Bacon. So I guess I can call this wonderful movie made by people I have no prior knowledge of. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, any, anyone can make a good movie. It doesn't matter how famous or not famous they are. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was bet. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh. 
call it my intuition. Yeah. Uh, give it ten more minutes. Or, um, nineteen. Wow. Back in, even back in 2011, you could send email from phones. Uh, yeah. My knowledge of tech is a bit weird. Eh, it's okay. I don't really got on the tech bag in as well recently. Well... Internet well, stuff, anyway, 2011. There's the captain. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. I'm a great Chris Bacon did the music for Alpha and Omega 2? <laughs> I what? thought I heard that name before. Uh, ah. Here you go. And the original movie. Well, the original movie was nice on the music and 2 was actually mainly a retread, so I guess... He wasn't in any of the other sequels, was he? Oh my god, he even did the 2011 Wonder Woman thing. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> well, at least he had this film, which got 90% of Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I guess. Plus he worked on the music for Paddington. He wasn't a main composer, but he did work on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, snap. Ugh. My god. He really is a mutilated mess. Uh, nice work by the effects guys, though. Yeah. Okay. It's amazing how an action-packed film pretty much ended off with the action, like, with barely three thirds in. We got like at least 50, about ten odd more minutes left, so anything can still happen. True. Dick Jeffrey Wright could get his way. That could happen too. I'm just saying, if this movie actually ends the way it is, I'd be fine with it, and I'd have to applaud an action-oriented film like this for managing to pull it off. This isn't really an action movie, really. There's only a bit, bits and pieces of it here and there. Not enough for me to call it a flat-out action film. True, true, true. I guess it's more of a thriller or science fiction sort of thing. And even mm. then, the science fiction is kind of limited. Oh, wait. Crap, my plan is not working. Now <laughs> 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 no, he's having his fill with his breakdown. <laughs> Hmm. 
<laughs> All right, let's go. The new me who you're just getting to know. Yep. <laughs> Is this guy an actual comedian? I mean, the actor, I mean. I don't know. Yeah, Max Denov, played by Russell Peters. Uh, yeah, he is a comedian. <laughs> a Canadian, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no! You just don't be in it for the body, I think. Twenty five, twenty four. And there we are. The bus hasn't sorry, the train hasn't exploded. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he went pretty much the majority of the film, yet when his plans are pretty much foiled, he explodes like that. Yeah. Yep. Uh -oh. Well, it's going to die now. Okay, Duncan. Nice to see you showing off this freeze frame shot here. You good at this, though? I'll admit that. Mm hmm. There's some of these faces when they're frozen. <laughs> Aw, he made them all laugh. Mm. Whoa. Yeah, that guy's dead. Oh, wait, did I just see his mouth move a bit? Uh, you mean right there, yes. Oh, whoa. Still moving. It's very worked. So, yeah. managed to create an alternate timeline. Yeah, where now he gets to bang Michelle Monaghan. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> so, how good are your teaching skills? <laughs> yeah. I wonder what you can teach, though. Army skills or something? Well, he's a teacher in this universe now, so... Oh. <laughs> Let us never speak of that terrible dry season we had in Chicago ever again. Yeah. <laughs> so, they are saved. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal can now live a happy life with Mr. Joe Monaghan. Jeffrey Wright um, is probably angry for the rest of his life. Uh, <laughs> Pera Flaminga, um, I know, she gets demoted or something, I don't know. Huh. Huh. What? That monument there, that big silver ball thing, what is it actually for? Uh, uh Joe, have you been to Chicago? Duncan wanted to yeah, Chicago, uh, yeah, why? Do you know what that thing is? Oh, are they in Millennium Park? Oh, right, right. Good job we have an American on our side here. Millennium Park, that's the place filled with a lot of weird structures. Looks, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> and now they're going.
There's the alternate timeline version of Goodwin. Oh, this is the alternate timeline? Yeah. Are we sure this isn't the world where he died and he's just texting her? I'm confused. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Hey, it's the Jeffrey Wright that's a good guy, I guess. Hmm. All right. Um, why was I angry earlier? Uh, you weren't angry, sir. You were actually just fine. Yeah, basically, uh, Source Code hasn't happened in this universe. Because that bombing didn't go. Yeah. I'll say! Yeah. So, you've literally created a machine that can literally create alternate dimensions and realities. Yeah, just hope it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Yeah, that'd be a real mess. And that's his source code. Okay, that was enjoyable. Okay, uh, final thoughts. I'll start with uh, Pedro. Ah, yeah, for me. It's a good movie with a very, very good ending. Uh, so, in general, it's a good movie, definitely. However, uh, that's all I'll say. It's, I won't say it's great because uh, there have been way, plenty of movies that have done the concepts this movie deals with uh, quite better. Um, I mean, the, the whole grown, the whole uh, time loop thing we've seen it done before, and even after. I mean, I per, like I thought, I thought for example, um, Edge of Tomorrow did the time loop thing better. I thought I thought it was more. I, I thought, the I, ending. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought, I, I thought from the ending, I thought they were more, they were more creative and um, interesting with it. Whereas, uh, as as for the as for the um, as for the alternate time, the creation of the alternate timeline thing and the human story, yeah, it was good. But again, most of these concepts I've seen, it's good, but there's better. But but, okay. so, but uh, it's a fine alternative. Sure, that's all right. It. Before Jovi gives his final thoughts, you know earlier we mentioned Groundhog Day and Deja Vu. Yeah. When we were comparing movies, when we were comparing this to other movies, uh, the critics did the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, they brought up Groundhog Day and they, they also brought up um, Deja Vu. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, well, that's okay. kind of what it is when you think about it, a combination. And, yeah. And, okay, uh, another thing before Jerry gets his final thoughts again, there was supposed to be a TV show based on this movie. But um, it got cancelled in 2014, and instead they're making a film sequel using the ideas that were originally made for the TV series. But as of now, that's all we know. Okay, Joe, we're off we go. Yeah, pretty good movie. Um, I see that it was apparently a hidden gem as opposed to being a hidden turd. And yeah, I enjoyed it. The idea is not the most unique, but one that's played extremely well. I mean, it's the twist. Instead of it being simply time travel, it's also creating alternate dimensions alongside each other and giving incredible powers to dead people, but I digress. Uh, yeah. I like the twist. I liked how everything was pulled off, pretty much. I liked the characters, too. Acting was pretty much solid, and yeah, music was good. And yeah, I could see them making a sequel out of this. <laughs> and it did stay true to its message. Make every second count. Yep. Okay, you done, Jiva? Yeah. Okay, my final thoughts. Um, yeah, yeah, what you guys said. Um, I mean, yeah, there are a few confusing bits here and there, and there were yeah. a couple of uh, moments where I was like, huh? But again, that's that's kind of what happens in this kind of story, and sometimes you just can't really fill in all the blanks. Otherwise, you're going to get bogged down in lots and lots and lots of exposition, and it's not going to be very much fun. Exactly. Yeah. 
yeah Actually, and um, yeah wait, 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 did you just take a cue from from my take on the whole uh latent thing um yeah 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 in fact when Leighton does try to do try does does try to fill in the blanks sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't <laughs> but um yeah 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 like i said very fun movie um it's not something i'd go back to watch over and over again because you know even despite only being 19 minutes there's a lot of um technical stuff we got to look out for and i don't know if my brain can take that every every, every um, um, with multiple viewings over a short amount of time I could now that I at least know what's going on the first time, but I'll admit that first ride is about as confusing as Memento. Well, at least I didn't switch this film off 50 minutes in. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that was Source Code. I hope you enjoyed our commentary, and stay tuned for when we eventually do Moon, which is Duncan Jones' other movie, and Warcraft. Goody. Okay, then. Okay, see you then. See ya.